Welcome back, Canaanites, for another monthly recap. As always, we start off with In Case You Missed It. This month was light on videos featuring three. First up was an analysis of Operation Red Flag and whether it would have been effective at ending the Human Covenant War. Next was an unboxing of the final Halo Legendary crate, finally. <laughs> and finally, we have a bit of an overdue review of Halo Oblivion. That was it, but I'm hoping to be more productive in December. If you haven't seen the videos mentioned, links are in the description box below. Next up, we have official news and releases. While on the lighter side, the news that we did receive has been pretty big. First up, 343 released a blog post detailing the future of HCS. While I'm not big into esports myself, the blog details a lot of how 343 plans to support the HCS community and ensure the quality and health of the program going forward. If you're interested, the post is quite extensive. Next, let's talk about Halo Reach on MCC. This month started with the third and final PC flight for the program, which was extended and expanded upon a few times before we finally got the announcement that Halo Reach would be released on Xbox One and PC on December 3rd. On Xbox, multiplayer, Forge, and Theater will be available to all MCC players for free, with Campaign and Firefight being an additional $10 purchase. On PC, Halo Reach can be purchased individually for $10, or you can essentially pre-order the entire collection for $40. Each subsequent game released will automatically unlock in the collection. Steam somewhat confusingly lists Reach as DLC for the MCC, which is technically not incorrect, but rest assured that if you want, you can purchase just any single or group of Halo games for $10 and not have to purchase the entire collection on top of that. Although, if you're planning to get more than four of the games in the collection, buying the entire collection is really just the cheapest way to go in terms of value. At launch, Reach on PC will not feature Forge or Theater, those features releasing later on when 343 deems them fit. That said, the MCC versions of Forge will feature a ton of new additions such as the Saber, Seraph Fighter, Falcon variants, civilian vehicles, new props, and so much more. I can't wait to do some dogfighting in Reach with the Sabers and Seraphs, personally. A blog post released on the 21st goes into this and more, such as known issues with input delay, server lag, vsync, uncapped frame rates, and even a full breakdown of how Bloom works and why it was or wasn't included in various modes in Halo Reach. Hidden Xperia did a great breakdown of all this news surrounding the MCC release, so either check out his video or read the full blog post, both of which are linked below. And of course, get ready for release on Tuesday. November was also an anniversary month for several Halo games, notably the 18th for Halo Combat Evolved and the Halo franchise as a whole, the 15th for Halo 2, and the 7th for Halo 4. Happy anniversary to all of these games. Our last bit of news for the month is something that's a little bittersweet for me. The Halo TV show has officially finished casting its core characters and entered production, which means we can probably expect our first look no later than summer of next year. That said, the final casting announcements left many people rather confused, especially with Showtime constantly assuring fans that they were paying attention to the canon. The show cast Danny Sapini as Captain Jacob Keyes, Olive Gray as Dr. Miranda Keyes, and Charlie Murphy as Maki, a human raised by the Covenant who shares their ideology. I won't spend too much time on this, that's not the point of this video, but I will say that I'm hoping Variety the outlet that originally reported on all this news got some bad information. Jacob Keyes didn't become a captain until after the Battle of Sigma Octanus IV in July of 2552. Miranda, while still noted to be a commander in the show, didn't become a lieutenant commander until 2550, but more so, from Halsey's journal, we can see that the likelihood of Miranda becoming a doctor of any kind was next to zero. Halsey lamented that her daughter had followed in Jacob's footsteps rather than her own. And then you have Maki. My hope is that she's something of a star killer type character raised in secret by some individual or cult sect maybe. Perhaps Truth or Mercy raised a secret human to make activating Forerunner tech easier, or some other member of the Covenant raised her for some reason. Ultimately, my point is that Maki could work as a character, but under very, very specific circumstances. But anyway, that's all the time I'll spend on this news. Though if you want to see some good videos that address these announcements, both The Spearhead and Hidden Xperia made, again, some good videos on the subject. And with that, we come to the community shoutouts. We'll start out with a few that have already been mentioned. 
Hidden Xperia made some great videos this month, one on the state of the MCC on PC, and then another on the Halo TV show news, so be sure to check those out. And again, the Spearhead also made a great video addressing the Halo TV show, so check him out as well. And then, I want to give a shout-out to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. Their weekly dive into Halo news and lore is always a treat, and I recently joined them along with several other community members to talk about Halo Outpost Discovery, among other things. Be sure to check them out on Mixer, Twitch, YouTube, and wherever you download your podcasts. Next, we have an amazing render of Master Chief and Arbiter in celebration of Halo 2's anniversary by Archangel470 on Twitter. Be sure to check them out. Then we have another podcast shout-out, one I only recently discovered, the Halo Outreach Podcast. This month they covered the Halo Reach flight and some HCS news. Be sure to check it out on Kevin Cool X's channel. After that we have this fantastic screenshot of a Sangheili Field Marshal, his energy blade at the ready. I have to agree with the artist, I'd love to see these return in Halo Infinite. Be sure to check out Mr. Skits on Twitter. Next, we have another anniversary, this time for everyone's number one source for Halo, Halopedia. 2019 marks the 15th anniversary for Halopedia, which had a number of amazing projects to announce in celebration, including a functional recreation of the Halo 3 Believe website, among so much more. Go show Halopedia some love and follow them on Twitter, and check out the official 15th anniversary update on Halopedia.com. After that, we have a render by Rookie425, with the one and only Huraglock. Blasto, eat your heart out. Check him out on Twitter, along with all his other amazing works. Next, in celebration of Halo 4's anniversary, Harspa has put out a blog on Halo 4's soundtrack and the work that went into it by Neil Davidge and Kazuma Jinouchi. Definitely give it a read. Then we have a piece by an artist named Theo Benezet, simply titled Spartans. It's a great piece appreciating Halo Wars, so be sure to check him out on ArtStation. After that, we have the current completion of Brandon Lowry's Halo Timeline series over on Windows Central, with the addition of an article on the events of Halo Wars 2 and its accompanying DLC. Give it a read and generally consider sharing the series around if you have friends uninitiated in the lore. It's a great resource for newcomers, so bravo to Brandon for putting it all together. Next, we have these amazing pieces by Rythaz, celebrating the anniversary of Halo CE. Rythaz brings us his interpretations of Chief exploring the silent cartographer. Head over to Twitter and check him out. After that, we have Pickled Gear with an amazingly frightening interpretation of the Timeless One, or the Primordial, from the Forerunner Saga. Check him out on Twitter. Then we have a full look at the evolution of the Mark V helmet from none other than Luminous Cactus. If you've seen his previous work, you'll love this. Check it out on Twitter. Next, we have this fantastic render by Bailey G. I think that's how it's pronounced. Again, celebrating CE's anniversary. A beautiful recreation of this piece by Halo artist Isaac Hannaford. And while we're talking about Bailey, her main account was recently suspended on Twitter due to some absolute bullshit, I'm not afraid to say. So, check out her secondary account where this piece was posted. If you liked her before, help her rebuild her following. After that, we have this amazing piece by S. Venomo. I think that's how it's pronounced. Check him out on Twitter. Next, we return to podcasts with the Forward Unto Dawn podcast. This month, they sat down to discuss Halo Silent Storm and Halo Oblivion, and were joined by Horospis. Check them out on Twitter and their website, forwardunto-dawn.com. After that, we have this awesome Mega Constructs art by Tom Jurassic, utilizing the recently released Mega Constructs Master Chief figure that was based on the Halo Infinite armor. Check him out on Twitter. And our penultimate shout-out goes to the Finish the Fight podcast and one of their recent episodes diving into Halo Helljumper, one of my absolute favorite Halo comics. Check them out. And of course, we end with a look at the Halo Spotlight. There was only one this month, but Snickerdoodle did not skimp on the content. This puppy is packed, notably with art celebrating the various Halo anniversaries from this past month. As always, be sure to check it out along with all the other creators highlighted here and show them some love if you enjoy what they do. Links to everything are listed in the description box below. And that wraps up the month of November. If this is out before Tuesday this week, then look forward to Tuesday as I have a few special videos set to release in celebration of Halo Reach coming to MCC on PC and Xbox One. Until then, this has been Halo Cannon, 
and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and if you really love me, hit that notification bell and leave a thumbs up. These both really help out the channel. I wouldn't be where I am now without your views and support, so once again, thank you. Keep on being awesome, Canaanites.